lagging like crazy. So Tim, do you want to get the um, presentation up there? I can't do these two things at once right now. Okay. We're changing the thing on the fly, so I got to take out the questions and answer thing that they're expecting that's in the thing. So we're good. Is there someone that can go into this document? I can, um, yeah, and, yeah. Link, and link the email address for us. Yes. Donna, you're on it. Yes. Yep. That Donna? Yep. All right. I'm going to just send it to you so you got it easy to find. All right. I think where I go. So, first night. So we're just going to say questions and answers. We we have to shut off the Zoom at eight. So we're going from video. Are they watching the video there? Or that's going to watch? No, we watch, said now. So watch the video at home. So we can start. My computer is lagging. <laughs> of course. Yeah, this could be yeah, super interesting. Okay. Hey, we're good to go? I think so. All right. <laughs> I'm going to get started. Hello, everyone. I think we have about um, maybe 50 to 60 people on here right now, and we're hoping that um, oh, you like join us. Team? Oh, my God. Uh, <laughs> Hopefully. Oh, yeah, Mike. Oh. You get him drunk? No, he won't even go home with me. I don't even know where that's coming from. <laughs> okay. Hi, everyone. My name is uh, Brooke Nankumber. I am the principal at Coventry High School, okay. and it's my pleasure to welcome you tonight to our um, freshman first night. And it's really weird to be doing this um, from my kitchen. So, um, I, and uh, I hope you bear with us tonight. Um, I want to introduce to you our admin team that is here with us. Um, so on the call tonight, um, we have Lori Ferguson. She's the director of our, the Regional Career and Technical Center that we have integrated into our school. Um, Mr. Hi, everyone. This is our assistant principal for grades nine and 11. Um, Mr. Jason Murray, he is our Dean of Students for grades nine and 11. So they will be um, following you, um, the ninth graders. This year, you will follow the, along with them um, through each grade of high school, and they will see you through to senior year. So we think it's really important for our administrators to really get close with our students and, and know them well, and also really important for our administrators to get to know our families. As people were logging on tonight, I saw some families of kids who just graduated. Um, so it's just great to know these families so well. And um, we, it, it's a way that we can really make a big school seem very small and, and personalized with people. And then for our grades 10 and 12, um, Ms. Dan Marie Zaborski is our assistant principal and Mr. Vincent Macaron is our dean of students for those two grades. And so we are all available. Um, if you do have questions tonight, that we don't have time to answer for you, um, or you may have questions after you go through some classes, you wanna um, speak to us about whatever it is, because this is uh, really a crazy start to the year. Um, we're available, you can email any of us, um, and we will uh, get back to you, whether it's, um, if maybe it's a quick answer through an email, or if we think it's something that definitely requires a phone call, you might need some further explanation about something. We're very happy to um, also call you. So tomorrow, um, you know, we could be returning some phone calls to you. But we want you tonight to get a sense of our school. It's, it's very hard to do that 
virtually through this presentation, but we've asked our teachers um, if they're available tonight to send you their Google Meet so that you can go on and meet them and at least get to put a face with the name. You got your schedules and um, we're trying to alleviate some of that anxiety. We also wanna go through the schedule that we're gonna start with. We're only going to share that schedule with you because we feel like sharing all of these schedules is just overwhelming. So um, we did that with our staff today. We welcome back our staff and we just shared the essential information that you need to know for the time being. And as things change, we can run some more meetings and make sure that everybody is, is clear on that. Um, one thing I am gonna encourage parents to do is just update their Aspen email. Make sure if you haven't received an email from us, it's because we have the wrong email for you in Aspen. And so today, if you have not gotten an email, I want you to um, send me your email um, after this presentation tonight and we will make sure it gets updated so you do receive the correspondences from us. So um, I want to introduce to you also a really special person in our school. Um, she's a director of student services. She is our um, head of guidance. We call her the guidance angel. She's pretty much able to fix any problem that anybody has. So um, not that I want you to just email her, but she always has the answer. Um, so Mrs. Donna Bowden, she's going to explain to you a few things about some of our um, expectations and uh, requirements for um, students. Hi, hey everybody. Um, welcome to the from the class of 2024. It's exciting to finally, well, we're not meeting you, but at least we will be meeting you hopefully sooner rather than later. Um, you all received your schedules yesterday. They came out on Aspen. If you did not receive it, you know, we probably don't have your email or if your Aspen is locked, you can email me and I can reset your Aspen account for you so you can see your schedule. Um, your schedule, we put you in your five core courses, whether it was English, math, science, social studies, and either a language or literacy. You should all have phys ed and the rest of your classes would be comprised of electives. Some of you are in the CTE program. Some of you chose other electives. And some of you may be in electives that you maybe didn't choose, um, but it's just the way your schedule fell together. We tried to pick anything that could have been a graduation requirement for you um, if we did not get you into the elective that you chose. Um, so you should all have a complete schedule with no holes in it. When you look at your schedule, you should have eight classes, including an advisory. And if you don't, you can email either me or one of your guidance counselors prior to um, school starting on Tuesday, and we can take care of that for you. In addition to the credits that you have to get for graduation, you also need to show proficiency. And we have proficiency-based graduation requirements, which will be brand new for the class of 2024. Um, there'll be three aspects to that that you have to do. And we'll walk you through the whole process and you know, take you step-by-step -step through the whole thing. Nothing to be worried about, but just to be aware of. You will be doing um, performance-based tasks in your classes um, that you will build a digital for portfolio that we keep in Aspen for you, but that's all done through your classes and that will be done, um, like I said, with your teachers. The second thing is you will have to do a presentation in your senior year. Um, it'll be something that's important to you, near and dear to your heart. You'll present that to a panel of, of teachers and, and school members um, in your senior year. And the third thing that you have to do, and you'll do this gradually over the, last, over the four years, is an individual learning plan. Um, guidance counselors work with you. Um, it kind of organizes your whole career path. You do career studies, you work on a resume, all kinds of things that will help you get ready for college. Um, it's, a required, it's required by the state and it is included in our proficiency-based graduation requirement. So I'm looking forward to working with you all over the next four years. And if you need anything, feel free to reach out. All right, thanks, Donna. So again, hi, I'm Tim Chase. I am the assistant principal for ninth grade and 11th grade. So I've sent this out in a different communication through email, but I shared this uh, presentation with you so that you had easy access to the links that are gonna be really important to you going forward. So what do you do before Monday? As we should all know at this point, Monday is the first day of school. We are in a distance learning uh, modality right now. So all of our classes, unless you are, uh, well, no freshmen are going to be in a level three or four CTE or a special population. You're going to be in a distance learning program right now. So um, the first thing you do is look at the schedule that you have in Aspen. As Mrs. Bowden said, you should have um, eight classes per semester on, on both sides. Um, but in terms of the first semester, 
I gave you a template that would be helpful. When you click it, what's going to happen is it's going to make you force you to make a copy. So that's your individual copy that you're going to work from. And you can fill in your schedule there and you can see how the rotation works every day. So um, do that. It'll make your life a lot easier when you start to figure out, okay, what's today going to be? So you can see on Monday, on Tuesday, on Wednesday, on Thursday, on Friday, how that's all going to fall. So once you've done that, you've got your Aspen, you've seen your schedule, you've kind of laid your schedule out so you know what it's going to look like. Check your email um, and your teachers should be working on, you should have some already. You'll probably get more as we get closer to Monday. Uh, teachers will be sending you links to their Google Classroom. They'll tell you either a join code or they'll send you a link. Make sure that you join all of those classrooms. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to access what's going on. So parents and students, please make sure that we're joining all of those classrooms. If you don't have eight periods in there, please contact either the teacher who has not sent you that classroom code yet by Sunday night, um, or uh, talk to your guidance counselor if there's a hole in your schedule, if you don't actually have eight periods on either side, okay? So that's really important for day one so that you're ready to go when we get here on Monday morning. So once you have that squared away, we have a special schedule because it's the first day of school. We wanted all of our students to be able to have an opportunity to see all of their teachers and hear from them and start to, again, kind of put names and faces and the teachers can kind of lay out in a more broad fashion what your class is going to be like. So first, we're starting off with advisory because that's a kind of a catch all place. The advisors can help you with your schedule or answer any questions about how to join in classrooms or to, to help you organize yourselves a little better. So each class is going to be half an hour. So and there's 10 minute breaks in between as well. So we're starting an advisory, which is period six on your schedule. It's a little weird again because it's it's the first day. Then you're just going to go one, two, three, four, five, seven and eight. Uh, there is a lunch block in there for you to eat lunch between 1140 and 1210. So just you're going to go to the Google Classroom. The teachers will be there. They'll have a Google Meet uh, link set up or a Zoom set up there. And then they can talk to you and kind of walk you through what the day is going to look like uh, and then what their class is going to look like. You'll probably get a syllabus and you'll get some information about those classes. So that's day one, a special schedule because it's the first day. So what do we do after that? Again, this has gone out a few times, but just to kind of look at it here all together, on Mondays, our distance learning schedule is an asynchronous AB schedule. So if you look next to that, it's probably easier to start with that. Um, Tuesdays are going to be called A days. Wednesdays are going to be called B days. Thursdays are going to be called C days. And Fridays are going to be D days. And if you look at the way A and B is structured, it's one, two, three, four. It's a little bit different. It's not five, six, seven, eight. Advisory is going to be last each day. So what you see is half your schedule is on the A day, half your schedule is on the B day. On Mondays, we're not going to be live in classrooms during those days. We're going to have what's called an asynchronous day. Teachers will give you work to do or something to watch or look at or something to read or some kind of work to do to get you ready for the week. Sometimes it's a carryover from the Friday the week before but it's going to alternate. Every other week is going to be an A schedule, a one, two, three, four schedule, or a B schedule, which would be five, seven, and eight. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, then every Tuesday is an A day. Every single Tuesday, it'll be one, two, three, four. And every single Wednesday, it'll be five, seven, eight, six. Every Thursday, we'll, we'll follow that schedule every single day, okay? So those are the schedule. Those are in that template that I sent you that you can fill in. That's going to help you stay organized each day so you'll know exactly what classes you have on any given day. What do those periods look like? So in the morning, we have office hours for students. So students who need some help, who before the day starts want to double check on something, make sure they understand it, uh, to ask questions, to, to get ready to get a little extra help. There's an hour built in every single day from 7.30 to 8.30 for students to get help or to check in with a teacher or a teacher may ask you, hey, can you come by in the morning? Let's talk about something before you, you start class. That's a time for you to check in and to get help. Then each class, there's four classes running each day. Each class is gonna be about 70 minutes, an hour and 10 minutes. The first half of that time, one of the things that we heard back from when we were March to June when we were in a distance learning um, situation where we had kind of class times, but they, they were kind of go, go as you go. We heard from students, we heard from teachers, and we heard from parents. We need more time with direct instruction or direct time with the teacher. 
Um, also, we recognize that in a distance learning situation, it's really important that people interact with each other in class so you get to know each other so that when we come back into school live, you'll kind of have a sense of what this class is, is going to feel like and look like. So first half, about 35 minutes or so, is going to be that live class time with the teacher. And then the second half of your, of your period is generally going to be extra help time or some kind of work or activity or instruction that's going on that's, that's more at your own speed at your, on your own time, not as much uh, live and you have to be there right then. So the first half is what has to be done face to face. The second half is things that can be done in other ways. And those will be set up by your teacher. And it may change a little bit from day to day, but generally we're not gonna go over 40 minutes of that face to face time. And then each day there's a 10 minute break in between classes. We've got lunch from 1220 to 1250, you've got a half an hour and we do four periods a day, as I was saying. That's how your schedule is gonna be every day within this schedule here. So one, two, three, four, that's how it's gonna follow. Hopefully that makes sense. So now I wanna introduce someone very important in our school community to talk about something that's really important to our school community. So I'd like to introduce Dean Hoskins, who is a teacher of Spanish in our building, but also uh, the one of the leaders of the Unified Oakers program here at Coventry High School. Welcome to class 24. I'm Mr. Chief, a teacher. I've been here 31 years right now, entering my 31st year. And this is the third year of our Unified program. And it's getting bigger and better every year. And I hope you we're going to be Mr. Hello, everyone. Yes. Hello, everyone. As Ms. Hopkins just mentioned, my name is Brendan Dowell, and I'm the president of the 2020 Unified Ogres here at Coventry High School. At my school, we are known as the Oakers, and the Unified Oakers has driven to redefine what it means to be a true Oaker. We have created an acronym that helps define what it means to be a true Unified Oaker. O stands for open-minded. A stands for accepting. K stands for kind. E stands for encouraging. And R is for respectful. The Oaker acronym is shown all over Coventry High School and helps remind and inspire our students what it means to be a true unified ochre. We're now going to meet the 2020 Unified Ex Executive Board. As the unified movement continues to grow and expand, this year we have implemented an executive board to better this program and all that it does. Starting off, as I already mentioned, my name is Brendan Dowling, and I'm a senior and the president of the Unified Oakers. Additionally, uh, Caleb Jones is my partner and co-president this year. Junior Grace Petraka is the vice, pres vice president and Special Olympics chairperson of the Unified Oakers. She also has a partner, Shauna Charpentier, who is the co-vice president of the Unified Oakers. Moving on to our Unified um, Executive Board members, we have Sophia Butter, a junior who is the chairperson of Unified Public Relations. She handles all of our social media accounts and works to inspire acceptance and inclusion to all the members of our Coventry High School community. Also, we have District and Community Chairperson, Natty Houghton. As many of you remember, we came to the middle school last year to explain what the Unified Oakers program is as a whole, and she will handle she will handle the outreach to different schools in our community and district. Moving forward, Emma Macaron and senior Nick Canisette will be the co-chairs of the Unified Sports and Polar Plunge Committee. The Polar Plunge is the largest fundraiser we as a program take part in, and the two of them will coordinate this large undertaking. Additionally, they will be the liaison between the many coaches of our many unified sports team and the whole organization as the Unified Oakers. We also have our youth social chairperson, Emily Vieira. As the Unified Oakers, we host bi-monthly youth social hours, which give all members of our uh, organization time to come together and socialize 
And sometimes there will be themes like in October, we might do uh, pumpkin painting or anything that's on theme saying during uh, the holiday season. And her job is to coordinate these um, new social hours that we host. Um, and finally, as many of you recognize, we have incoming freshman Emily Smith, who is going to be one of the Unified Student Executive Board representatives. She was the face of the Unified Movement at the, at the middle school, and she is now invited to be the representative between her class executive board and the Unified Executive Board. There will also be representatives for each other class, but those have not been decided yet. So now is your chance to join us. The Google Classroom code is pasted below and we encourage you to please, please, please write it down so that you can join us afterwards. Additionally, we have four social media accounts, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and Snapchat, where we can, where you can follow and go to to see anything that we do and we'll post and hopefully we'll inspire everyone that follows us to be accepting and inclusive. Thank you very much for the time. We encourage you at the Coventry Oakers to be the change that you want to see. Please join us and join our Google Classroom so that you can get more information as, on, the pro, on the program as a whole. I'm now gonna pass it back to Ms. Megan Holmberg. So I, um... First of all, I want to encourage everyone to watch this video. Um, we're not going to play it here because the sound quality is, is pretty low, but it is a fantastic video showing you all about our unified movement. And I want to stress that we thought that for freshman first night, this was one of the most important things we could include in our presentation because this, what started as a club at our school a couple of years ago has completely transformed our school. It is a different place and it really has become a movement among our student body. Everything that they do is student led, it's student, student driven, it's grades nine through 12, it's kids working together, it's kids really finding um, a place where they know they belong. Um, it's just taken over our whole school and it, it is the program that I am probably the proudest of. Um, I think that it represents everything positive in our school. So I really, encourage you all to become part of this movement and to really embrace um, what it means to be an ochre and to be unified. Um, there's so much going on in the district. I know that the sound quality, maybe you couldn't hear Ms. Hoskins so well earlier, but we're pushing it out into all of the schools in the district and it's led by our high school kids. And so we want you to be involved from day one. And we recognize that being on distance learning is really hard, especially as a ninth grader coming into a new place but this will help you um, meet people and feel like you are part of this community because um, that's, that's exactly how you should feel. This is your school. We want you to take ownership here and be part of something really, really special. So um, I wanna thank um, Ms. Hoskins and, um, and Brendan for joining us um, on this. And um, so at 6.40, we're gonna have students jump onto their Google Meets with their teachers. So I thought we could use some time right now to take some questions from people, try to give you some answers. I know super confusing some of this stuff. I think if you just stick with what we're putting out there right now um, as the schedule to follow, you're going to be okay. But we are certainly open to any questions. Tim, you're on mute. Okay. I just want to let everyone know if anyone has, and then we'll bring in so you can see. So, um, Jim, what did you tell them to do? Raise their hand. Is that what you said? Okay. Someone's asking in the chat how we take attendance. So each of those classes that you have to log on to each day. Um, we'll have an attendance uh, Google form in the chat. The teachers will be posting in the chat. You'll open it, you'll, you'll um, complete the Google form and the teacher will put your attendance in based on that. 
if um, so one of the questions is about remote learning. So if your child is going to do the remote learning, which is the option um, that is we're using our Edgenuity platform for, we're going to be supporting that with our with our some classroom teachers. Um, their schedule has not been made yet. So the counselors are working on that schedule and aligning it to the Edgenuity program and making sure that we can get you all of the class offerings. So Donna, do you want to speak on that at all? Nope, that's, I just put that in the chat as well. We've got guidance counselors will be calling all parents of uh, families who elected remote learning this week and will be setting up with their classes and your um, electives. And I would anticipate the beginning of next week, we'll have all the accounts up and running. Just, just a note for parents that may or may not have a full schedule of teachers available to them tonight. I did include, if you're in the presentation, which I shared, it should be in the document that you share, that I shared with you. If you click meet your teachers, if you're missing any of them and you want to double check to see, if you click on that, like it will give you a list of the department of the teachers that are here to, um, to meet with students with links to their uh, Google Meet. So in case you get up and there's so much you have, double check here by department uh, and by name and see if they are here. There's a possibility that that might be the case. Um, that'll help you fill in a blank if there's somebody missing there. Um, so. Um... There's a question here about attendance. So you do have to submit your attendance. You need to be on that classroom when it starts. Um, if, if not, you're going to be marked tardy. Um, but um, you do have to be in attendance in all of your classes each day. And we will be sending our full attendance report for the day over to RIDE um, at 2 o'clock. But kids are expected to be logging into their classroom at the start of, that, of each class period. We think we've been pretty reasonable in terms of breaks for students and also in terms of um, the length of the classes and the direct instruction. Um, some, uh, there's a comment here about missing an elective on the schedule for semester two. Um, your guidance counselors are looking at those um, schedules that have holes in them right now and are filling them and they may be reaching out to you also to select an elective for semester two. Right, Donna? Okay. Um, um, tonight is not a, um, a night that teachers have to be on. Um, we did decide to do this at, um, you know, kind of at a last minute. So we did have some teachers who may not be available tonight. So you may find that in your schedule, you might not be able to meet all of your teachers tonight. We are hoping that you get to meet um, a lot of them. So, um, so I know that some of you may not have received something and, and I um, you know, apologize for that, but um, some teachers were not available tonight to do that. Um, I'm trying to keep up with all your questions. Uh, how do you know where to go for Monday? Um, so Mr. Chase shared that Monday schedule and he, um, so teachers are gonna be sending you their classroom codes. So you have to be looking at your emails. That's one of the things that kids hate to do is check their emails, but you love to check your text, you hate to check your emails, but check your emails because your teachers are sending you classroom codes and every class is gonna meet on the first Monday so that you can log into those classrooms. Um, Chromebooks, um, grade nine students should have Chromebooks. Um, coming, you're coming from the middle school, we know you had Chromebooks, so you're just gonna keep your Chromebook. If you're having a Chromebook issue, there is a spot on the, um, on the web page for the district and um, you can click on that and, and request some Chromebook support on that and um, the tech department will be in touch with you. If you're having trouble with that or need us to guide you to exactly where that is, um, just send us an email, we'll send you the link. Um, <laughs> let's see, struggling, kids who are struggling. So we are, we are gonna stay on top of that. Um, we do stay on top of that. Um, we have case managers staying on top of their caseloads. We have teachers that will be reaching out for uh, anything to do with absences and classes. We send out a weekly form to our teachers asking for um, information about any students that are struggling. And we meet as a guidance team, an admin team, and we strategize how to support students. Sometimes we have to put certain plans together. We will be involving parents at um, stages like that, but one of the best things you can do as a student 
is when you feel like you're falling behind, ask for help. There's, there are so many people available to help you. Um, and then as a parent, also reach out and ask for help. We are, we, we are here to help you. Um, we know that people are going to struggle. We know that distance learning is not ideal, but um, we're here to support um, whether we're in person or at distance. Okay, let's see. I'm trying to keep up with these. Um, um, again, you may not be meeting all your teachers tonight. Hopefully you get to meet quite a few, like I said. Um, can you please announce Cosmetology 1 freshman class? Okay, there is a link there for that. When schools open, are we required to wear masks throughout the day? The answer is absolutely yes. That is the ruling from Ride as well. All staff and students must wear masks to school and keep them on. The only exception to mask wearing is during lunch and breakfast. So anytime that a student is eating a meal, um, they may remove their masks. Uh, the um, lunches are gonna be done in the classrooms. Students may remove their masks for lunch, but they do have to put them back on. Um, kids are going to be passing. We have uh, one-way hallways when we get into school. Um, we'll be going through all of that again with you as we get closer to transition you back to school. We'll go through what the actual building's going to look like, but yes, kids will be required to wear masks and staff members as well. Um, and feel free, anyone else on this call, if you want to jump in to answer any of these questions. Okay, someone can't understand how the class schedule rotates. Um, I think that's a remote learning question, Brooke. Okay, so we'll be reaching out to explain how that works. Um, yeah, exactly. So that's a call that you'll be getting from the guidance department. Anyone on remote learning is going to be, who has elected to do that, um, is getting a call from our guidance department directly. There's a question Thanks. saying I can't use my Chromebook and IT hasn't responded. I won't be able to log in Monday. What can I do with Mr. Murphy here? Give instruction on that. And so the Chromebook, there's a link on the district homepage. www. There's a, a gigantic link right at the top of the page that says COVID-19 resources. If um, I, th I think he keeps cutting out too. So if um, if you're having trouble with that um, link, then just email one of us and we will walk you through the steps to uh, get that taken care of. We want your Chromebooks up and running for day one. Someone's asking if we're going to spend all day in one classroom in the building. The answer to that is no, no. You're you're going to be going through a schedule. You're going to be passing. We do, like I said, expect masks to be worn. Um, you know, I'm not going to argue about science or whatever. It is the ruling. It is the guidance. It is what we are being told we, we need to do. And um, so we are going to insist that students do wear masks, um, but they will be moving from class to class and switching classrooms. Um, school supply lists are handled by um, individual teachers. So you'll probably be getting that through your Google Classrooms. You might have some teachers tell you tonight some things you might need, um, but they're, they're minimal. So um, we don't require too many um, things that you would have to go out and purchase. Um, uh, let's see. If anybody wants to change a class, if they don't like a, an elective that they got, I know that's one of the questions, you have until September 25th to do a class change form. They will be, um, a Google form that will be on the school website. We'll mail it out to anybody who may need it. Um, but you have to fill out this class change form and it will not be available until after all your classes on Monday. Okay, that's how you switch classes. So there is another question about the Monday schedule, the first Monday. And again, teachers are gonna email you Google Classroom codes and you're going to go to all of your classes that day. Mr. Chase, in this presentation, has the um, schedule for you. We emailed this already to students. So again, students, you need to check your emails. And parents, we will email this to you directly and we'll post it to our, um, our school website for you as well so you can access it there. 
um, the, school, the school newsletter that went out has lots of information that went to parents and students. So all the schedules are in there, all the information you could use to answer many of these questions. You didn't exactly receive that. that. So if you didn't receive the school newsletter, then we do not have the correct email address for you. And that has to be corrected ASAP. So anyone who's not receiving correspondences from the school right now is, is we don't have the right address for you and we need to correct that. Um, Lori, CTE classes on distance learning. You want to take that oh, one? Where is, where is that? How is do it? CTE classes work on distance learning? So um, if it's for grade nine, it will work just as your other classes. We will have uh, learning platforms for some of the CTE classes, depending on which one it is, your teacher will be sharing content with you um, and you will be doing, um, following some videos, doing some things at home, video taping yourself, doing some demos and um, hopefully we'll have you in the building uh, before, you know, before your class is over and you'll be able, able to get some hands-on experience. Okay, there's a question here about, uh, yes, we have four classes a day in our schedule. Um, so depending, an A day has periods one, two, three, four. A B day has periods five, six, seven, eight. For a C and a D day, they just rotate a little bit, but you have the four classes on each of those days. The only exception to that is gonna be that first Monday, just so you can meet all of your teachers on one day, on your first day. And then after that, it's four a day. So what I'm going to do, um, I, I'm going to wrap this up right now because I want kids to be able to get onto their Google Meets for their first class, which is at 640. Um, any parents who have questions, I, please, please, please email us. We've been responding to tons of questions over the past you know, several days. Um, you know, we apologize for a lot of, um, you know, the anxiety that um, we've, I think we've caused because we haven't had the answers to give you. Um, things have changed on our end many times um, based on lots of different things, but um, we are hopefully in a, I think we're in a really good spot. We're ready to open school. We had our teachers in today. We had a terrific day with our teachers back in school. Um, so we're ready and we're really excited to have you there. So. Um, please reach out to us if there's anything we can do, um, you know, in the next few days and also throughout the year to make the, your experience the best that it can be. So um, I'm going to um, have us sign off and um, send you um, onto now the Google platform to the Google Meet and, and meet, start meeting your teachers. All right. So have a good night, everybody. And um, again, send us your questions through email. Thank you. Hi, everybody.